Welcome to another session in the educational series about Vaultize. Vaultize, the enterprise platform for enabling secure file sharing, anywhere access, and mobile collaboration with end-to-end -end data security and flexible deployment options. Hello, my name is Gary Cook, and I am the Chief Solutions Architect for Vaultize in North America. In this session, I'm going to show you how to create a protection policy in Vaultize. So let's log in as our admin. And we're going to come out to our policy screen as we've been doing. We're going to come down here to where we see protection. And we see we already have a default protection policy, but we'd like to create one for the group we have created in earlier sessions. So let's go out to create a policy. And we're going to call it the AAAA Protection Policy. And now we're going to go through some of the various choices we have. So actions to be taken when protection runs on the client. So we, I'll show you as part of this demonstration, we'll go out to the workstation and look at the executable software as it runs and show you how you can sync data to the vault for data protection requirements. So here we have backup filtered files, which we're going to go ahead and select. We're not going to select to decrypt or encrypt filtered files from a Windows target. We could if we wanted to, or we could encrypt those files coming up onto the server. And then when we put them back down, we can decrypt them. Or wiping filtered files. We're only going to select the backup filtered files. Going to page two, this area in here where you can select desktop and laptop and include sources or exclude sources. If you wanted to use this for endpoint protection and set it up so that you automatically say protected everything from uh, the desktop, you could put that in here. If you wanted only certain laptops and desktops from a particular IP segment, those you could put in here. I'm going to leave this as blank, meaning that when I do that, the end user can control what they want protected upon the server by dragging and dropping that or selecting sync to vault. So I'll show you how to do that when we get to the user part of the demonstration. So we'll go ahead and click continue. Now we can come in here and select what kind of files and folders potentially we want to have backed up. So in this case, I'm going to pick Office Files. So we'll select Office Files. We'll put it over here and include. I know I probably shouldn't, but we're going to go ahead and do picture and image files, audio and music files, and video files. So I'm going to put all those in here. You'll see I have some other choices if I wanted to that I can make. I'm not going to select any of those. If I have an include, I always need to have an exclude. So we'll scroll down here and we'll say exclude everything else from what we're going to be able to sync. So once again, this will be the user dragging and dropping this kind of info up onto the server from the user GUI. You can also select to exclude files bigger than a certain size, smaller than a certain size, or potentially older than a certain number of days. This area right here, I'm not sure if you can see it, says or type a custom filter. So if your company has an application that you've created or that you've purchased, when it has a file type other than the ones you've seen over here in the files and folders to include or exclude area, you can put that particular file type here and then be able to have someone drag and drop and protect that data. So we'll click on continue. And finally, we're going to come to scheduling. So we can do continuous, which would happen as we're going and saving things as the computer, the laptop, desktop, or the mobile device touches the server periodically to check and see if there's any updated files. That would be considered continuous as far as sending data up to be protected. You could also select to have it done periodically, so based on every number of hours or minutes. You can select dates of the month, pretty self-explanatory. Pick a date and then do hours and minutes, AM, PM. Or you can do days of the week and select, say, you know, just Fridays that you want to have data backed up after somebody's been working out all during the week. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as continuous. We can have it stop after so many hours and minutes. So if it runs for four hours and you want to stop it, you certainly can. The nice thing about Vaultize is we will pick up from the exact bit or chunk that we have moved up to the server. We will start from there and continue bringing up the data until all the data has made it up to the server. As far as retention, you can keep file changes for X number of days. You can determine how many maximum versions you wish to be protected or sitting on the server. And finally, you can delete files that are older than a specific number of days. So we're going to go ahead and create our policy. So now you see we have our AAAA policy. Right now it doesn't affect any groups or users. We have it set up for backup, continuous. We've selected a couple of filters. And as you've seen before, we're going to come out to our user area. We're going to come up to apply policy. We're going to pick our user group. We're going to select continue. And now we're going to come down to where it says protection. And you'll see that we have a couple of choices. We want to pick our AAAA protection policy. You'll see the items that we chose. It's set up for continuous. We're going to back up filtered files. The data sources can be from anywhere. Here's the included files that we're going to protect. Everything else is excluded. So we want to go ahead and add that. 
and then continue to apply that policy to our group. Here you have another selection where you can say what kind of devices you want this to apply to. Do you want it to apply to desktops, laptops, Windows, Mac, Linux? We haven't talked a whole lot about the variations, but you can apply this to any workstations, Windows, Mac, or Linux. We're going to leave it as all types of devices selected here and click continue. Another piece we can look at is the target type. So we can say, do we want this to go desktop laptop? Do we want Google Apps to be the object of what we're backing up? Or do we want Google Drive to be the object of what we're backing up? In this case, we're going to stay with desktop laptops. And you can see, once again, I can refine it even further to say, you know, I just want the desktop, just the My Documents area, maybe the Outlook folder you want to make sure you're backing up, or the user profile or home directories. In this case, like I said before, I've selected to leave this blank to let the user determine what data Data gets protected upon the server and I'll show you how we do that here in a second so we're now going to apply this policy to this group of users once again you see now we have it applied to all of our users so we're going to log out of here we're going to do a couple things we're going to shut this now once again I mentioned if we go out to the end user we're using my workstation but if you come out and if you're running the executable file on the workstation you can do something as simple as coming out and we'll pick this particular file right here, the six ways to rethink. If we do a right mouse click, we're going to see share and sync to vault. Well, in our sharing policy, we've already talked about how to do the share. Well, if we want to do sync to vault, it's as simple as clicking on it, and it says this file has now been added to our vault. So we'll click OK. Now, if we come down to our executable file where we have the Vaultize icon and do a right mouse click, click on my vault. When we come up to the recent files, we're going to see there's that file, six ways to rethink your file movement strategies that we just put up there sitting on our server. We can share it now, but now it's being protected as far as an item we wanted to make sure was going out to the vault or up to the vault I server. The other thing you can do is you see, you can say sync to vault or we can come out here to all data. And when we do sync to vault, we click here. Now we can see the various areas on associated with this end user and this desktop laptop. And in this case, I've got a documents area, my desktop, Microsoft Outlook. I've got my C drive. I've also got some other drives that I have attached to this particular workstation. I have an F drive, a D drive. I even have the demo share that we had talked about as my Y drive my for the Anywhere Access policy that we set up. So you can come out here and select additional folders and or files underneath here. If I come out to desktop, you'll see that we have several folders already under here. The Vault ties info, shared files, educational videos. We could go in there and select particular folders, if there's subfolders or even the files underneath it as you see some of these listed here. We'll go ahead and cancel that. And that's how you can set up a data protection policy in Vaultize. We hope that you have found this session in the Vaultize education series to be informative and educational. Please visit our website at vaultize.com for more videos in the series educating you on the Vaultize platform. If you have any questions or comments about Vaultize, please send an email to sales at vaultize.com. Thank you.